So these guys talked me into uh, putting a pre seam on our network to help us with some of our queuing problems. We had a lot of uh, issues that, you know, we spent a lot of time troubleshooting all sorts of different things that, uh, you know, we thought were problems. You know, all oh, this backhaul doesn't have enough capacity. These access points are overloaded. Customers keep calling in with speed issues. And we were using uh, primarily MicroTix with simple queuing. Uh, we, were, we used one of the different ones. I think we'd switched to SFQ uh, queuing model, and that did seem to improve things somewhat. But we were still getting reports of people having, having issues at different times of day, and we'd look at the backbone and be like, you know, it doesn't look like they should be having issues, but we're still having, having stuff going on. So uh, Garrett uh, is a very polite Canadian way. It's like, you should really try this out. And so he said, we could, he, said he could implement the queue. So we implemented ours, uh, and the, the, I can say the rest of the time is just to say it was awesome. It's made a huge difference in our network. Uh, we're, we're a little over 4,000 subs, and we have one phone that support tech. And there's a little bit of overload that goes off to a server plus if two people happen to call at the same time. But uh, I, I literally, we used to have uh, three people that had to spend a pretty good chunk of their time on the phone dealing with customers. Uh, we had a lot of, you know, the service calls going out to try and fix a problem, you know, you reboot a radio or something, and the problems would keep coming up. Well, now we've got pre seam we can go and we can look and see all the all the stuff that they've been talking about, it absolutely works. It's been fantastic. In fact, we don't even use as much of it as we should. Uh, we we kind of see on, on the on the list, you can see the, the red ones. You know, if we see something where the average subscriber gets over a certain point, that's what we kind of focus our efforts on. But we really haven't even dug very deep down into all the things that you're actually capable of doing with, with the product. It's, it's pretty amazing. The fact that we've been able to plug it in and have it there and just problems went away, huge. So a little background on our, our wireless ISP. Uh, I've been around. Uh, this one's been in operation since 2004. I actually started doing wireless in 99. Even going way, way back in the day, I was actually building Linux boxes with IP tables and IP chains rules to try and do bandwidth shaping because it was the very first problem we ran into when we were doing wireless because we only had a meg to work with. And we thought, oh, that's going to be plenty because most people are used to, you know, 19.2 or 33.6. These are rural areas, 56K didn't even work. So. Uh, so we put that in, and what we find is, you know, the first person that got plenty of bandwidth, you know, used it, and then everything started running terrible. So I recognized that there was a need to try and have some kind of control out there, and that was, you know, the very first stuff we had had a little $150 Linux box I made out of spare parts at the bottom to do bandwidth rules. So uh, it's it's super important with wireless as opposed to a lot of the other mediums. Uh, you know, we're serving 4,000 customers. Uh, we've got all kinds of different, anywhere from 10 meg to gigabit for business plans, and we're doing 10 meg uh, to 100 meg residential plans. Uh, network equipment we're using right now, Cambium, Microtech, Base Cells, IgniteNet, Mimosa, Ubiquity, so kind of the, the common dog's breakfast of all the different things that you would typically see deployed at a WISP. We've tried a lot of different things. Um, we use uh, network management system we built in-house called Achilles that actually does, it actually does some of the stuff that, it tracks some of the stuff that the pre-seam does, uh, but it's been really handy to have that to see, you know, we use that to track how much bandwidth people are using or what their, what their latency looks like uh, and signal strength and a few other factors like that. And we use Nagios to monitor our network and then we use FreeSide for billing. FreeSide is, you know, it's open source. It's kind of odd. It doesn't have a lot of integrations, but we were able to work out a way. I think we actually integrated with Achilles. We upload our, Achilles has all of our bandwidth profiles in it. So we worked out a way with uh, PreSeam that basically all the bandwidth profiles we upload into our network monitoring system, then get uploaded into the PreSeam. And that has worked really well so far. So, like I said, uh, wireless networks, it's huge to have some kind of bandwidth management in place. We've got a limited amount of capacity in comparison to fiber. So we need to figure out how to get maximum benefit out of it. Uh, so by doing edge queuing, which what we originally started with, uh, we felt like you know, that'll help kind of keep traffic off the rest of the network and make it so that we, we have more ability to kind of control things there. Uh, 
the troubleshooting stuff has been fantastic. Obviously, uh, I don't even know half the stuff that he was talking about on there, but what we have used has been fantastic to go out and see where you've got issues with, uh, you know, whether it's a customer, I think we've even, there's even been situations where it turns out somebody has a bunch of noise on their Wi-Fi in the house. We can even tell that that's part of the problem. But it's just been fantastic to be able to have that tool to go out and look and say, well, the, the, be, the more troubleshooting data you can use to make an intelligent choice about where the problem is really has a lot of reflection on the backside of not just sitting at the desk, but the fact that you don't have to roll somebody out. We have a huge network. I think it's like a nine hour drive if you drove from one edge of it to the other. Uh, there's parts of my network are closer to Adair, Adair uh, Winter down in Amarillo than they are to me. So I really don't like sending truck rolls out to fix a problem that could we could figure out what the resolution is without having to go down there. So that, that's pretty big to me. Uh, the one thing that's been huge, this, this deal about the fair queuing, smoothing out those traffic flows at peak that has just been tremendous. Uh, you know, we went from having calls all the time about people with buffering issues with Netflix and applications that weren't working to we literally get almost nothing. The most of the speed complaints we get is there's something <coughs> catastrophically wrong at their connection. You know, so they their neighbor turned on a new Wi-Fi router on the same channel as, as their Wi-Fi router and stuff slow. You know, just that that sort of thing. Um, we just don't get the garden variety that used to just roll in consistently of people having issues. So that's been that's been really good. Stuff that we did, you know, we uh, the Microtik Simple Keys helped. I mean, it's, it's better than nothing. Uh, you got to have something out there, and it worked. But we also found, especially once we started getting to higher bandwidth packages, there were issues with the Simple Keys. Like we had a deal where we would provision somebody for eight meg and we would never see over about five and a half or six. Mm -hmm. And that's a well-known, if you don't change, if you use the default simple queue in Microtik, that always happens. So that's why we switched to SFQ, so that helped. But we were still getting people complaining about not getting the full speed that we were supposed to. We even tried, you know, then we tried making the queues bigger. Well, we're gonna sell somebody an eight-minute connection, but we're actually gonna have to queue it for 10. And then it just was like, come on, let's get something that actually works right. We actually tried another shaping product and that product was more of a like deep packet inspection type of model. And that seemed like a little bit overkill. You really have to get some intensive hardware to be able to run that. And I think it starts to get pretty intrusive. Every time you add a step like that, that's gonna be so much work where you have to take the part, packets apart and look at them and quantify them and everything. That's just, that's just a, that's, that's taking a very complex approach to it that requires a lot of heavy lifting. Whereas I think, and I'm not as technical as I should be, but the way these guys have put their system together, in my mind, is a lot simpler. It's a lot more easy, easily applicable and a lot less, there's a lot less maintenance required because you aren't having to go in and tweak all these different things and say, oh, I'm gonna give Windows Update this priority or I'm gonna prioritize this or prioritize that. You just plug this in and they're looking at the network flows as opposed to trying to figure out what's going through the packets. And it just, it just works a lot simpler. So, and it was so much simpler. The other product, I, we, we struggled for months trying to get it set up so that we could differentiate packets and make things work like we wanted to. And we never actually got to the point where it really worked the way that it should have. So that was another big reason why we really liked the pre -scene. Um Like I said, Garrett was very persistent and polite. Uh, so the way we set it up, we have uh, coming in from our network, we bring everything into a core router. And because we do uh, about 95% of our traffic is NAT translated. So we do carrier grade NAT. So we bring the pre-seam in before we do our NAT translation. That's a very key step. It'll work very well if you try it afterwards. <laughs> so uh, we bring it in there and then it goes to our NAT router, into our edge router and on out. And we also have a uh, bypass in case the uh, pre seam is not responding on that interface, we can just go right around it straight to the NAT router and all hell breaks loose when that happens. But at least people have, you know, some kind of moderately compromised internet as opposed to no internet whatsoever. So that's worked out pretty well. Uh, we actually have two primary internet gateways, uh, one in Nebraska and one in Denver, Colorado. So we have a, a 10 gig pre seam model. Well, technically five gig, but uh, 
in their polite way. It generally does a little bit more than it's supposed to, so that's that's appreciated. Um, we max out, I think we've hit about four and a half gig maximum through each one of them, and they, they seem to work okay. But we've got one in uh, Nebraska and one in Colorado. They have done really well. So uh, at the time, I think I said we were still working on our network topology for the full system. We actually got that sorted out at this point. So uh, one of the things I really like about the pre seam is because the configuration side of it's cloud-based, uh, we upload to whatever the cloud deal is, and then it turns around and it sends the information out to the remote units. So if we wanted to add more back, backbone connections, they would all be pulling the same information. Uh, we have had situations where we've lost connectivity and traffic that normally goes through Denver turns around and goes through Nebraska and vice versa. Uh, as long as they're hitting one of the pre-seams on the edge, they're, they're having the queuing takes place the way that it should. So that's worked really well. As I said, the FQ Codal is much more, much more efficient than the direct packet or the deep packet inspection or the simple cues we saw with the Microtix. Uh, the other thing, I can probably talk about it now, but we used to have some interesting code that you could put into Microtix to make Netflix work better than it should, or to, you know, we don't have any of that anymore. Uh, I guess technically that was kind of a net neutrality violation, uh, but half, most of what we do is a network neutrality violation according to the crazy people that push that stuff. So. Uh, this took a lot of that out of it because we're just looking at pure packets, pure network flow. You know, this is this is what the capacity of the network is. This backs everything down a little bit so that uh, you know everything operates at maximum efficiency, so latency continues to work. So ultimately, customer applications work much better with pre-seam than they did without. So that's that's been the biggest the biggest difference. And honestly, the uh, I, I think the pricing has also been fantastic. You know, I, for whatever reason, I need to have you guys change where you send the bill because that's really good with Bookkeeper. It goes to me. We get a little latency between <laughs> uh, what happens. So let's, uh, let, let's take a hop out of that and stuff will probably work better for the payment actually returning to you. Um, but I, I still see the bills and of all the bills we have to pay, this is probably one of the easiest ones yeah. because it's already, it, I, I can tell you, it's probably just upfront saved us the cost of having another phone tech and the, I don't know, reduction in service calls. My infrastructure managers here, he remembers what it was like before we had it. What was your, a lot, lot easier with pre-seam in the, in the house? Oh, yeah, our, our tickets are at least cut in half, if not, you know. Yeah. So it's, the, it's pretty. We're on a third of the tickets we used to. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic product. So anyway, just to summarize everything, you know, I would say we've probably seen about 10 or 15% more capacity across our entire network because we've got this in place. Uh, I don't know if these guys really explained it, but as the packets come in, if you're doing the queuing out at the edge of the network, then you don't have to do that queuing throughout your network. So we've got situations, we've got towers that are like, you know, they're probably five, six hops away from fiber. So if we're doing the queuing out at that end of the network, we've actually got five, six hops that are gaining 10%, 15% more efficiency because if it has, if the packet has to be get dropped or queued, instead of having to go all the way through the network, it's getting taken care of at the edge. So that helps a ton by having that extra amount of uh, efficiency. Uh, traffic flows are way more predictable. You know, you don't have stuff where uh, somebody, you know, some some somebody's kid decides to do a game download. I have had this exact same thing happen. Uh, we just moved to a new house and I set our connection up. I was like, why does this connection suck? It's only running 10 meg. Well, it turned out my son was downloading 50 gig worth of updates for his game in the basement. But honestly, other than the speed test, I didn't notice any difference. Everything else was working fine. I was just doing a speed test to calibrate. So uh, it's pretty impressive to have you know more predictable traffic flows as everything everything works. You know, like I said, I think the pricing is pretty good. It's a very sane pricing model that makes sense. I think it's it's fair. Uh, I've seen some other solutions that I thought got a little silly for the actual value we're getting. I have no question whatsoever that this has been a very valuable solution for us. Um, I like that it's cloud-based, like I said. The configuration goes up to the cloud. They distribute it out to the app, to the gateways. So if you have multiple points where you connect to the internet, it's great. You don't have to worry about all that. So basically, long story short, super happy with the product. You know, uh, I'm 
I'm actually not charging him my full speaking fee for a product endorsement for this. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that goes to say something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm real, real happy with it. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, continuing it and whatever new stuff that they come up with. Mm -hmm.